In this video, I am talking about this giant Sigma Contemporary 100 to 400 millimeter f5 to f6.3 lens. I have only used art Sigma lenses before and this is my first contemporary lens review here on my, on my channel. This is a ultra telephoto 100 to 400 millimeter zoom which is really well priced and it certainly has got more to offer than, than it seems. I wanted to test one of the cheaper Sigma ultra zooms for a long time for a reason. I bought this Sigma 70 to 300 millimeter lens nearly 20 years ago on eBay for 150 pounds and it served me very well right until March this year. It was cheap but it was very reliable and super sharp. Uh, I have only retired it because it doesn't autofocus on my Nikon Z6, but I kind of needed a telephoto lens in my workflow again, and that brought me back to Sigma, looking for a modern alternative to this old and trusty cheapo, I think. Uh, they don't make 70 to 300 uh, cheap version of this anymore, so to me, this is the closest equivalent available right now. I must say massive thanks to Sigma UK for lending me this lens for this review. However, I wasn't asked or paid to say anything specific, so it is my honest and not biased opinion about it. Sigma makes this lens with a Nikon F and Canon EF mounts, which is this one, DSLR version, and a new mirrorless version for Sony E and Sigma L mounts. I have tested Sony E version on a7 III and Nikon F on this one, on Nikon Z6 with FTZ adapter, and I am very, and I mean very, impressed with it. Before I talk about its performance, I need to talk about the price. This is soup thousand dollar lens, which is really very hard to believe considering its size, how big it is and how well it performs. The Nikon F and Canon EF version uh, are however cheaper than Sony and Sigma mounts and retail here in UK for £650 for this and £900 for this. So let's talk about the photography performance first. From the moment I have put this lens on a camera and pressed that shutter button, I was literally blown away. This lens can deliver an incredible quality, quality associated with lenses twice the price of this. The biggest challenge with lenses this long and with the minimum aperture reaching f6.3 when fully zoomed in is being able to keep the shutter speed high enough to get motion-free sharp images handheld. As bigger zoom magnifies the smallest hand movements and shakes, but here this is not an issue at all. The built-in image stabilization is really working well and, is, and it is actually possible to get great results without ever thinking about it or, or fighting it. This uh, zoom range of 100 to 400 millimeter is very versatile for anything from a bit of uh, landscape, cityscape, portrait and, and wildlife photography. Even though it is not a wide aperture lens, you get an amazing looking blurred background, subject separation and the bokeh, uh, bokeh full of character thanks to the zoom compression. And what is zoom compression? You may, you may ask, what the hell is it? <laughs> well, zoom compression creates an illusion that the background is actually closer than it is to the subject you are focusing on. So for example, if you are photographing a person uh, with a mountain range in the background, possibly hundreds of miles away, by zooming in and focusing at your subject will create the zoom compression, which will make it look like the mountains are right behind, squashing the person perspective and making the background really blurred. This creates more unusual look than primes deliver. With this lens combined together with this really good image stabilization, it's a real pleasure to shoot with and to create amazing looking images really easily. This lens gave me everything my old and 70 to 300 millimeter did, but 
literally on steroids. 100 to 400 millimeter to me is more of a close-up lens than a zoom lens. So instead of thinking that I can zoom in and to reach and photograph something which is very, very, very far away from me, I keep thinking that I can create better close-ups and more interesting images of people and objects closer to me. So it's treating it as a enlarger and not a telescope. Oh, in my opinion, anyway. I personally always loved the ultra zoom lenses for portrait photography and this, this is no exception. Incredibly sharp and very accurate at focusing, eye tracking and keeping the images look slick and real looking. There is just something special about the overall feel of shooting with it and the quality of images it produces. The image stabilization also works great when shooting a video. I was able to get perfectly smooth and absolutely usable shots handheld at all zoom ranges, especially very impressive at the 400 millimeter telephoto end. What Sigma did with this package considering its price is just incredible. This lens is actually light for Sigma, especially one this size. And it weighs about 1200 gram with the supplied hood. There's a small weight variation depending on the mount. As you can see, the, the Nikon ver version is slightly smaller than the Sony. The whole thing is made of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. It has got nice, solid feel to it. Large zoom ring and smaller focus ring, both firm and smooth. Zoom extends quite a bit, but that's really expected from this focal range and it's not a problem at all. The zoom on this lens can be operated a traditional way by rotating the, the zoom ring or by the pull-push method. It can, so it kind of feels wrong, like I might break something, but it's designed for that, pull-push. There are several buttons on this lens, uh, starting from the lock, uh, from the lock uh, button, which is a uh, lock so you can't zoom in and you can't pull it. I presume this is uh, to prevent the lens from being accidentally pulled out uh, the barrel when getting it out of the bag or, or lens case. There's a standard auto and manual focus switch, very self-explanatory, but I was actually surprised that the Nikon version has also got extra MO, manual override switch, and you can override the auto focus by turning the, the focus ring. This is really useful if you are trying to focus on something smaller uh, or thin like a plant or a bug uh, fairly close to you and the auto focusing is not finding the subject because it's small. You can easily just turn the focus ring to force it to focus more precisely and quicker. As soon as you let it go, it goes back to auto focusing. I kind of like it and it it's great on that lens, on the SLR version, Nikon and Canon, but it doesn't work on a Sony and Sigma. You can uh, speed up the focusing by using the focus uh, limits switch. Uh, with this, you can use the full range. The focus has to travel from the closest possible focusing position to the infinity full rotation. It takes longer to auto focus from something far away to something really close to you, uh, but you can limit it to six meters to infinity or six meters to the closest focusing distance of 1.6 meters. This is uh, also adjustable via the Sigma my USB dock. Fiddly to change the buttons, but if you want to speed up your AF, it really works. There is also a focus hold button on the Sony version that can be also programmed to many other functions via the camera, camera menus, but that's not available on the SLR version of this lens. Image stabilization switch, which has got uh, three positions, standard position, standard stabilization, number one for everyday situations, uh, handheld, and also position two, designed sp uh, specifically for, for panning shot. These two stabilization options can be customized via Sigma USB dock and their strength adjusted. Nikon and Canon DSR version uh, has also got custom one, two and off switch, which I guess is for custom settings of image 
stabilization. The biggest flaw of this lens, in my opinion, is the lack of built-in tripod color. Lens this long and weighing over a kilogram will surely put the stress on the camera mount. Putting the camera on the tripod will force the mount of the camera to take full weight of, of this giant. Uh, the color would allow you to mount the lens to the tripod and not the camera, eliminating the stress on the camera's mount. There is a solution, but it costs extra money though. Tripod color is sold separately for additional £140, and that's only available for Sony and L mount versions of this lens. You can actually see there is a rubber ring on this Sony version, which can be removed to attach the tripod color. The Nikon and Canon DSLR versions don't have that option and attaching tripod color is not possible. This lens offers a lot for an amazing price. Sony and Canon 100 to 400 millimeter lenses with almost the same spec cost more than twice than this. Considering that this Sigma can deliver results on par with the best out there, it would be an amazing investment for anyone who needs a lens with a far reach for nature and wildlife photography, incredible for any type of close-up work and amazing, really amazing for portrait photography. After using it for only two weeks, I am a huge fan and I'll be getting one for myself ASAP. Once again, thanks to Sigma UK for lending me these two versions of the lens for this review. And this is it from me. Hope you liked this video. And if you did, give me that thumbs up. And if you like this kind of content, photography, video cameras, lenses, reviews, and tutorials, then please consider subscribing. Hit that bell button to get notifications of my future videos. And thanks for watching and see you next time. And the Sunday lens wins. is not wrong at all. I feel like I've been talking for an hour, maybe three. Talk, talk, talk. These recordings always make me exhausted. So much bloody talking.